another fantastic weekend of fights. Um, obviously the main one that everybody was looking forward to this weekend. Uh, David Benavides and Caleb Plant. Again, we've been spoiled. We're only at the end of March. Another fight of the year contender. Absolutely brilliant. Both guys went at it non-stop for the full 12 rounds. Benavidez got the uh, undisputed de decision, which is correct. Um, he, he just started to really beat up um, Caleb Plant down the down the stretch there. You just see the state of his face. You know, he, he took a lot of punishment, but he was still fighting back. I mean, early on, uh, Plant sort of was in control with his boxing. His, his speed, you know, the variety of punches, hand, hand speed, you know, foot speed. But obviously Benavidez is very well known for being a slow starter, so that was kind of expected. But the, the, some of the exchanges, how those two guys survived 12 rounds, is beyond me. You know, at one point, but by about the ninth round, I kept looking and I like, one of these guys is going gonna, is gonna to start wilting soon. And, and fair play to the pair of them. They kept up a hell of a pace. Uh, fantastic. Uh, absolutely brilliant, again. Uh, another big fight that, led, uh, that lived up to the the, the, the hype. So, so it looks like uh, ben David Benavidez is now the interim champion, WBC super middleweight champion, which means he should be next in line at some point for a shot at Canelo Alvarez because obviously he's the king at super middleweight. He's got all the belts. So. Whether or not that fight will happen, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, well, Benavidez doesn't deserve the opportunity. He's not in his league. Hey, there's only way, one way to find out. Fight him. I think Benavidez has probably got more of a chance against Canelo Alvarez than John Ryder has in a, in a few weeks' time. So, you know, if you're going to criticise Benavidez not, need, not deserving or not being in his league, well, John Ryder's not in his league, and I'm Brit, and I'm saying that. So... There's that. Uh, and obviously, the, we were spoiled this weekend because then um, I just finished watching it now. Actually, I didn't have time to watch it all day. Jose Ramirez knocking out Rich Comey in the eleventh round, and again that was an eliminator for the WBC light welterweight title, which of course is held by Regis Progre. Uh, Jose Ramirez produced an absolutely stunning body shot knockout in the eleventh round over Richard Comey. Again, these two. They went at it non-stop for 12, well, for 12 rounds, for the entire 11 rounds that it lasted. And again, I, I was amazed that they, they were both dishing out punishment. I mean, Richard Comey was landing that, his, his fantastic uh, heavy right hand. And, you know, he was catching him quite regularly. He was catching Ramirez quite regularly with his, uh, with his straight right hand. And I looked a couple of times and I thought, mm, if he keeps landing them, Ramirez isn't going to be able to take much more of these because, you know, he's quite heavy-handed. But then Ramirez was smashing away to the body uh, throughout the fight. He was landing left and right to the body and then following up with uppercuts through the centre to the foot to the head. Again, just non-stop action. I was, I was on the edge of my seat throughout the whole thing. And then, of course, he bundled the first knockdown in the 11th fight. At, at first glance, I thought it was more of a trip or a push. But obviously, the replay showed a right uppercut plus a... Uh, Sort of chopping right to the behind the uh, the ear, and obviously that scrambled him a bit. So yeah, okay, it was legitimate. But that and again, when it stopped, I, when he dropped to his knees, Kami dropped to his knees. I didn't realise quite what had happened because it had happened so quickly. And I saw that in, in the replay, that left hook right to the rib cage. It's my neighbour's shower going off, so you have to excuse the noise. And uh, yeah, and he was yeah he was done. And he was he was counted out. Uh, I don't know where Richard Comey goes from here, really, because he's a uh, he's thirty six years old. He's lost, uh, you know. He's been stopped now, and you know he was knocked out by um, Teofimo Lopez a few years back. And obviously he was bashed up quite beaten up quite badly by um, uh, Vasil Lom Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, was that the year before last? So I don't know. He took a lot of punishment in that. I mean. Uh, he's still a, he's still a, a formidable opponent, but I don't. I think his his best days at uh, world level, in my opinion, uh, are finished. And of course, the chief support for 
the Ramirez fight was uh, Sinisa Estrada. Uh, she managed to unify her WBA lady strawweight title with uh, Tina Ruprecht, Ruprecht, a German lady. Took her WBC title, and that was another cracking fight. Again, just non-stop. I mean, it was the. I mean, Estrada is super bad, as she's called. Estrada. She landed more punches. She, she was in control of that fight all the way through. She won pretty much every round. I mean, she got caught a couple of times. Uh, Ruprecht, Ruprecht, excuse me, probably fucked her name right up. Landed some good straight right hands and a couple of counter left hooks that got um, Estrada's attention. So, so you know, I was really impressed with with with, with those ladies. They just went went at it. Estrada, I could see big things for her down the line. You know, she could be a, another rising force in, in 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 women's boxing. So that was all the good stuff that we had a fantastic weekend of. Now to the negative. I actually sat through Lawrence O'Coley's fight with David Light. And I've got to say, a lot of people have been saying it. I've been trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Lawrence O'Coley is the most boring fighter I have ever watched. He really, really is. I don't know what it is. He just... I, 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 I tell you what, I, I nearly fell asleep a couple of times during that fight last night. He dominated it. He won every round. It wasn't even close. David Light, he tried, bless him. He did try. But he was just being grabbed hold of, you know, the whole fight. And I don't know what it is with a Cody. He just smothers his own work. He lands a couple of good good right hands and you think, oh, here we go. He's going to turn up and finish the guy. And then he just grabs on, wrestles and holds and... I mean, it's obviously effective. It wins him fights. But my God, is he fucking boring. You can kind of see why, you know, Eddie Hearn has got kind of... What what could Eddie Hearn do with the guy? You know, they're all blaming Eddie Hearn. He never got these opportunities. So he's, he jumped ship to Ben Shalom's boxer outfit, promotional outfit. I can't see what Shalom can do with the guy. I mean, I'm not being funny. I could. I was watching the crowd and they were leaving during the fight. There were people walking out. Because it, they were bored shitless by it. And obviously, I don't know how true the stories were, but I was reading stories online that um, they were giving tickets away to it, which wouldn't surprise me, because Lawrence O'Coley, fuck me, if he was fighting in my fucking back garden, I'd close the curtains. He's terrible, he's boring. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a talented young man. I mean, he's an Olympian, and he's got the WBO Cruiserweight title, but Christ almighty, is he fucking dull and boring to watch. Good God. I mean, there were little flashes last night. He, he had David Light in trouble a few times. And I thought, oh, here we go. He's going to knock him out and then put us all out about misery. And then, no. He just stops. Or he holds on and grabs on and wrestles and pulls. And, oh, I don't know. I found it extremely hard to get through. That was a real brutal fight. And not because of the action. Because it was just brutal to watch, to get through. So, yeah. That's the only negative this weekend. Um, I mean, there are some big big names out there for a Cody the fight in the cruiserweight division. Um, Maris Bradis is probably lurking about. Jay Opatire, people like that. But do we really want to... Uh, would any of those guys want to get in the ring with him? Because he's fucking terrible. He's he's just going to grab on all night and wrestle all night. I mean, people used to criticise Johnny Ruiz for that, the old uh, WBA heavyweight champion years ago. And yeah, he did do it, and it was boring as well. But uh, yeah, this Lawrence Coley is pretty. He, he's fucking hard to watch, and I'm not. I'm no no disrespect to the guy. He's very talented, and he won every round. And for Jesus Christ, no, that was fucking hard. That was brutal. So, onwards to next week. We've got Anthony Joshua's big comeback fight since his back-to-back -back losses to uh, Usyk. Jermaine Franklin is his opponent. Um, I'm not really looking too up too forward to it, to be honest. Um, I will watch it, of course. But I just, again, who who really gives a fuck? I know he can't, you know, he's lost two back-to-back -back fights. He needs a win and he needs a confidence builder. But I don't, I'm finding it very hard to get excited about. I don't give a shit, you know. Like he'll probably win, and he should win on paper. It should be quite an easy fight for him. 
but you just don't know, do you? You don't know what's going on up here, really, since obviously the the, the, the Usyk fights. So, until next week, take care, everybody, and I'll speak to you next week. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the week. Cheers. <laughs>